Hey guys, Art Forge here. Welcome to another video. Uh, today's video is going to be specialized mostly for any 8th graders who graduated from for any 8th for any graders that graduated from from junior high mostly, mostly in District of A who are coming into us who are coming into Oswego East High School to, and wanting to and want to do some summer camp training with in the with the cross country guys with the cross country boys so let's get right into it uh for now i'm going to be talking about run i'm going to be talking for this video i'm going to be talking about running form and why it is important to maintain maintain good slash decent form while running. Throughout my time in throughout my time in OE, even though throughout my time in Strigo East, even though I've only been even though I've only been in the student for like two years and I'm going to be going to junior, I wanna be able to help any I want to be able to help the new freshmen that are coming into Oswego East, help them become successful and continue become successful and continue to get stronger in, in whatever they do, especially if they want to do cross country and track. So, so yeah, let's get right to it. So, so why so why is form important? Now, the reason for this, the reason for this, especially, especially how coaches keep emphasizing like the running form and the importance of maintaining that form, especially to run, is so that it, so that it allows you to maintain a consistent, it allows you to maintain a consistent pace, and 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 also maximizes the amount of power that you put in for for each stride in which a lot in which running isn't just about how fast you can go or how far you can go without stopping it's not just about those aspects sure sure running does involve like like your stride stride can involve stride length like how far you can reach with you know, with each step while you're running but it's also about your body how your body moves how your arm moves how your legs move it because when it comes to running it re running emphasizes a lot of a lot of your body parts especially having to maintain good form so that you again you're able to maintain a consistent pace and a good speed in order to get the best results in each to get the best results in each workout or each race that is to come. So, so I'm gonna show you a lot. So I'm gonna show you guys what I sometimes see, especially with you guys who are still trying to learn, who are still trying to uh learn like the per a good way to run how how form should look mostly going to be doing my arms most in my body kind of show how what's supposed what i sometimes see or what i usually see and then what you're kind of supposed and what and then i'll show you what you're supposed to do so a lot a lot of times sometimes i see some some kids, especially in junior high, they kind of, they kind of run like this, their arms with their body like swaying side to side. That's kind of, that's not, that's what I sometimes or usually see. The, your body keeps swinging side to side. Now the issue with this is that you're putting a lot of pressure by you're using a lot of energy just to do this because i feel like because this is a mistake that i've made as well 
like, in, cause a misconception that a lot of people, even me, have made in the past, when still trying to learn running, when still trying to learn how to run, uh, we think, we think that doing this makes you brings more power, brings more force, so that you can run faster. But it really doesn't. And the reason for that is because again, you're using a lot of energy just to do, just to swing your arms and your body. Like reaching out your arms like this does not help. It does not help at all. It just makes you more tired, in which you will use up more energy than you than you in, than you originally intend to use, in which makes it harder to maintain a consistent maintain that consistent pace and speed to finish a workout, finish like get through practice or finish a race. So come so I'm gonna show you now what your arm and body should look like. Should be like this. Now, it's also now it's not just the arms; it's also your hands too. Your hands also play a factor in this. So, for me, I usually like to personally. I always like to cup my have my hands in a cup, cupped uh, position or form. Form. That's just that's just how I usually like to run. I, a lot of times, and a lot of my coaches have also said just like like it's e like if you're tensing up which is something I still have trouble with I still tense up pretty badly especially during races but it's kind of like keep your like hands relaxed have it like in a relaxed like comfortable position or motion when you're you, when you're doing your arm swings, when you're running, and just like because this, because the because if your arms are tense, it's again, it's going to make you p put more force and use more energy than you want, just to maintain the speed and the pace to finish the race. So, kind of just have it again. Have it. Have your hands in like a position that. Is comfortable. Don't, but don't clench your fist. Don't clench it. Clench your hands into a fist. Don't do that. Just have it in a nice, comfortable position. Kind of do that. And you see, and kind of keep your try to keep your body like just straight. Like not. Don't try to move it around. Try to keep it straight. And the power also comes from your arm. Because again, when I said, again, I see people, again, when I use, sometimes see, I see people do this, try to reach out, when all you need to do is kind of go up like this, go up into someone, into this, and then just reach out. So, kind of having to do this with your arm motion. Most of the power is when you get your arms back, because your arms should be. Your arms should be in this position when you're, when the arms are going back, which, which, which allows more force to be applied, which can all, which allows you to increase your strength, increase your speed, so increase the, pace, the pace that you're going at. So all, so if you guys, if you guys want, uh. So, so if you guys want, kind of lay on the floor, kind of sit on the floor, this, kind of practice going slow, kind of doing it slowly for a few moments, try to do this for like 30 seconds, do this for about, do this for 30 seconds, and if you're comfortable, then go faster. But again, try to 
you try to exert a lot try to try to exert that that speed and, and just to get your arm from here all the way back here so now so that's so that's the arm movie so that's how it's supposed to look like when you're running your arm motion, your body motion. Now I'm trying to show you what your legs are supposed to do. So, comes to your legs, it's kind of in a high knee position. So you're kind of like this. And so, a lot of times, so again, any new freshman that might want to do that might want that want to get better at running. They could watch this video if they want to. Uh, we do we practice comes when we practice at OE we emphasize high knees and butt kicks. And the reason for that is because it goes into a cause usually you want to bring that force it goes up and then goes up down and then goes up so hang on let me, let me so, so it's like this and then go up down there so basically so basically it goes into a high knee so you go into a high knee, kind of go down on your heel, go to your toes, lift the other leg up. Once that leg goes down, this leg kind of goes into a butt kick position. So it's like that. So, but technically that's mostly for distance. That's technically for distance running, especially from heel to toe. Especially for heel to toe, that's that's usually where that's for that's usually for distance running. When it comes to sprints, you're most you're going to mostly be on your toes. The reason for and become the reason why you're going to be mostly on your toes, especially for sprinters, is because because it takes because you got it takes a lot less time to get down to your feet if you just go on your toes. If you go from here, it takes a bit more time, which can actually, which slows you down. It can actually slow you down when you're trying to go for dead sprint. So that's why a lot of times, a lot of times with sprinters, we usually train, especially when we do like box starts, we tr where we wear our spikes, we we run on our toes. We we bear, we almost never land our we never land our heel we never land our heel never go on our heels and then go down so that's kind of the gist of it so, so i know i'm not really in the best place to kind of show you how it's supposed to look but yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be like this. So I'll just do it slow motion just to make it easier because I'm not in the best spot to do this. So it's gonna be again high knee, heel to the ground, heel to the ground, go on your toes. So it's gonna so it's gonna be for one leg, heel to toe. Down, heel to toe, leg goes up, this leg goes up, then this goes, then when this leg comes out, the leg goes up into, the other leg goes into a butt kick position. Which, that emphasizes more power in your, str in your stride, in, in your stride, because you're going to be doing a full leg mo, you're going to be doing a full leg Going to be doing a, going to be doing a full leg motion when you're going to be 
when you're going to be uh, running. Same, the same thing, you're going to be emphasizing your arm too. So, for anyone who are interested in doing sprints in high school, and again, we're still in 8th grade, uh, so, I'll show you a s basic understanding of what block start is. I'll just I'll just use my kind of use. Hang on. So, I'll use dumbbells, kind of help me. With. I just use my dumbbells. Let me get this. So, so what is? So how does this work? So how does this work? So, when a uh, box starts, it's not going to be like this, obviously. It's going to be like, it's going to be like, like, it's going to be, a, the box start, it's going to be like this, it's going to be somewhat like this long, with like, sets of blocks on each side, or legs, which you adjust for your starting position. So, I'll just use these. Um, <clears throat> so, what you want to do... Action. So what you want to do a lot of times, so depending on how you start, is personal preference and your how how you start is based on personal preference. Or you could how you start you could just simply just just tell someone stand still and you just push them. Whatever leg goes first is the one that goes back. So I'll th I don't know if you caught. Hang on, let me, I'll do this again. Let me, I'll see. You guys caught that? Did you catch that? So, so this is just this is why normally. This is what my this is my normal leg I would do too. So I stepped out with my right leg first when I was about to fall back. So which that means my right leg is the one that's back. And, my, and I start off with my left leg out in front. So so it's going to be like this. So on blocks so block starts your tech. Now I don't have box starts to kind of show you, but I'll just kind of explain. So. The way box starts work, you have two box starts. You set it up to where, where again, like I showed you, the foot that you stepped out with first is the one going to be back because that's how you're going to go out. It's going to be like that. But you don't just, you don't step out. You kind of, you kind of jump. It's kind of like a jump forward in some way. It's kind of like a skip. You're like skipping forward, but in a way that you maintain balance and maintain good running form. So, so again, but on block, you're not, you're, your toes are not going to be like this. Your feet are not going to be in this position. You, Lily, this part of your toes will be touching the ground. So it's going to be like this. So your shoes are going to be like this. Especially and on and on the back one too. You're also it's going to be on the your very tippy toes. So it won't be up like this. But because I don't have black starts, I'm going to be starting out like this. So depending on which leg is going to be out front and which leg is going to be out back, really depends. Again, do the, do the put push push your friend. See which leg goes out first. See that leg that. Whichever leg go, steps out first is the one that goes back. That starts behind the other leg. So I have my left leg out for uh, my left leg in the front, my right leg in the back. So how's this? Work? So it's going to be. So it's also important with your arm position. So your arms are going to be like a triangle on the ground. You're going to be in a triangle position now. Now, I don't, now your arm, now your hands have to be like behind the starting line. They cannot be a path, they cannot be on top. They have to be behind. 
your head for when the, when the person when you have someone who wants to start like tell you we have the starter we have the starter to, when you when the starter is ready they'll tell you they'll tell you on your marks set go so I'll just so I'll tell you the process so this is this also includes for distance running too so um, so when it come so when it comes to distance running, it's like all the same concept, but the difference is that distance runners they don't use blocks. Sprinters, the sprinters, sprinters use blocks. So when the when the starter says on your marks, you don't go into a right position yet. You kind of move around, kind of strut, kind of stay. Kind, you're kind of loosening up your kind of loosening up your body. Kind of loosening up your legs, your arms, kind of jumping around, and then you're going, and then later you're going to a set position. You go into a set position, just somewhere where you're comfortable. You don't, so, just somewhere where you're comfortable. You just go into that position. So I'm just showing for distance. This is for distance running, by the way. So it's like this, you kind. Of, just in a position that you feel comfortable with. When the starter says set, so when the starter says set, you're going to have to be in a position where you're ready to go. So you could just be like this, and then the starter says set, you just, it says set, you kind of go in this position where your arms, where your where one of your arms are in the where your arms are in a running position. You're getting ready to go into the right form. And then you do. and then say go, you go. So it's kind of, so kind of, it's kind of just the on your marks part for sprinters is the basically the same thing, but the difference is when it comes to box. So I mean it's kind of the same because you're going to, so comes to box, kind of moving around, shaking up your arms, legs, jumping around, staying loose, keep your body warm. Oh, and the important thing is, when it comes to running, try not to sit down. If you need to kind of like, kind of like go to a crowd position, kind of like, kind of like do this, and then when you feel like kind of just try to rise back up keep your hands above your head now kind of, just kind of stand back up move around kind of walk around like if you stand still it's going to it's actually going to take if you stand still it's going to usually take long it's going to take longer longer for you to recover now 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 a lot of people now here's the thing though a lot of people keep before I continue, a lot of people keep having misconceptions that a lot of times cross country training is harder than track training. Now, what I mean by cross country track? Now, the track part, I'm mostly talking about sprinter, sprinting train, sprint train. Now, the difference between each one is that cross country training, you're running a pretty decent long amount. You're they're also logging in a lot of miles in the practice too, but the difference is that the, the difference is that you are going to be <clears throat> you're going to be you're for each workout you're not going to be running at full speed. You will be running at like a seventy to eighty per seventy eighty to ninety. Like 60, 70, 80 to 90 percent. That's like that's like the max. Unless it goes for a time trial. Unless for time trial, then it'll go to a then that's where you go all out. But for most practices, you're going to be going to 60, 70, 80 to 90 percent for every workout. The reason for this is so that you can still be because it's long distance, you want to still be able to have enough energy to continue. Now the difference, 
and practice or practices are longer because they are because the distance is a lot greater than that of sprinting. But when it comes to sprint training, sprint training, you're going you want to go all out every single time. I don't cause here's the here's my thing. Unless coaches says otherwise, majority of the times you want to be trying to go all out. Depending on the workout. Depending on what you do. So let's say let's say uh two hundreds, right? You a uh, workout of two hundred meters. You that one you wanna go at a ninety percent you wanna go at a ninety to ninety five percent. If you want to go all out, then sure, you're going to just tire yourself out. Like, you can only do one, and then you're just, like, you're just dead after that. But that, but still, you still want to go pretty fast. You want, you still want to go at a 90 to 95 percent. Not all out, but still a really fast pace. But if it's shorter, like, um, like, 100, 100s, 100 meters, 55 meters, even lower than that, that's where you go all out. No questions asked. Because that's a shorter distance. And it tests like how fast you are at the start off. Um, and the thing. In which the thing is that. When it comes to sprint training. Because you're going. You're using. You're going to be going. You're using more power and energy than. And effort than you would use in distance training, it's going. Your muscles are going to fatigue faster, which is what your muscles are going to fatigue faster. And this is why reco This is why recovery, and this is why recovery and eat eating is like really important, especially especially when it comes to this training. And distance training, it takes longer for your muscles to fatigue. But again, you're building the cardiovascular endurance to survive like long distances. For sure. Long distances for longer periods of time. So that so those are the differences. Now now none of the now they're pretty hard. There none is harder than the right because they are because you can't compare them. You people you can't really compare sprinting to distance. They're complete. They're different parts of running. They're completely different aspects of running. You can't really compare the two. So, just kind of keep that in mind, especially when you want, especially if you think of trying to compare distance training with sprint training, because again, one emphasizes long distance, the other emphasizes short distance. Long distance, trying to keep a consistent pace over time. Sprint training, all out. For a short period of time. So kind of keep that in mind. So alright. Anyway. Let's finish this video off with how. Start off with blocks. So blocks. Kind of start off with this. Your arms are in a. Your hands are in triangle position. And once you kind of. From the. Once you're ready from the. On your marks. On your marks. You're kind of done. So a lot of times what I see. Especially with varsity guys. A lot of times I see them kind of do this, kind of stretch out the, the legs, and then go into he go into the block, stretch out the other leg, and then go into the box. So that a lot of times I see them do that. You can do that if you want, but again, it's personal preference. Again, if if you want to, then if you don't want to, then that's fine. So in order to for the per for the starter to say set, your head needs to look down. If you look up, uh, if you look up, they're not going to say set. So, and the same, oh yeah, that's the same thing for distance. You can, you need to kind of keep your head down. Keep your, kind of keep your head down, kind of showing that you are ready. It shows the starter that you're ready to start. So, same thing. So, but you kind of hold it in position. You're sitting like, your head is down like this. It says set. Your legs go up. Kind of go like this. You say go, and then go. So that's how you. 
That's how you start off blocks. Now, now, depending on the blocks, you're going to need someone to help hold down the blocks so that it doesn't move. It does so that the blocks don't slide when you're coming off them. But <clears throat> anyway, uh, yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Um, you guys want uh. If you guys want more instructional videos, especially for any fre any eighth graders that are going to be going into the freshman year, especially at my school, Oswego East High School. If you guys want more videos like this, please let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe. My channel will be po I'm not. I'm going. To be, I'm going to be posting workouts, like workout instructional videos every Wednesday. I'll try to do it for during the summer. I'll be trying to post one every Wednesday, so that's going around three or f around three to four p.m. That's going to be those are going to be the times, and it's going to be it. Hope you all enjoyed. Sh share, like, subscribe in my video. Share, like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.